trying to pack. I'm not looking forward to this at all. <laughs> Is this legal? Hello and welcome back to my channel. Just letting you guys know that me and my channel are very much alive. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Just kidding. I know most of you have no idea who I am and why you subscribe to me in the first place. That aside, I haven't really gotten around to making much content recently because I got a job after almost a year of unemployment. <laughs> yeah, apparently the job market is not especially interested in hiring molecular biology PhDs trying to escape academia. Who would have thought? And then after finally landing said job, I had to move to a different country. That country being Germany, where I had to move to from France, which is where I was currently residing. Apart from the administrative nightmare such a move represents, you also have the issue of how to move all of your crap from one country to the other without going broke. Now I've managed to do it a few times before, but this time was the first time I had to organize a move involving living creatures other than myself and Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland being a mammalaria cactus and not the R&B singer. No, at the time of this move I had 22 more plants as well as two squamates of the suborder serpentis, aka snakes for you plebs out there and a slug and I had no intention of leaving any of them behind. Not even a single plant. Every living thing currently in that apartment was coming with me because when I get a pet and even a plant, the intention is to kind of keep them for life whether it be theirs or mine. Except for the spiders in the apartment, uh, those can stay. They invited themselves in and are essentially part of the original inventory and I wouldn't want the next tenants to miss out on those guys. Now, while my boxes of books and old electronic devices I've been hoarding since the early 2000s can be transported by truck fairly affordably, I don't think it would be especially safe for any plant or animal to be bumping around in complete darkness in the back of a moving truck for multiple days as it meanders through the European continent. So we had to employ a different strategy for them. That strategy being just stick them all into my car. The problem, my car, a German whip, as the Anglo-Saxons may call it, happens to be a VW Polo. Now for French standards, this may be considered a medium-sized car and I suppose for Americans it might be microscopic, but regardless of how you would perceive this car socially, for my intentions, the space was quite tight. Sure, I could cram my snakes and plants in there just fine on their own, but the problem was that the snakes come with terrariums and the snakes kind of need their terrariums. But can the terrariums fit in my car? Well, no. I mean, I can barely squeeze the corn snakes terrarium in there, but it is literally physically impossible for the pythons terrarium to fit in there even if it were the only thing I had to transport. The math just is no mathing. So initially I thought of getting the ball pythons terrarium delivered to my new place within a few days of me arriving there myself and in the meantime I actually prepared this temporary enclosure for her where she would be fine for a few days. Okay, this thing has been running for maybe 40 minutes. Um, let's have a peek inside, let's see what's going on here. Okay, the heat map is in here. I can feel the warmth, but I really don't like heat maps. <laughs> So initially I thought of getting the ball pythons terrarium delivered to my new place within a few days of me arriving there myself, but then the prices for such a delivery were just oh, too damn high. Bruh, bruh. And renting a car? Bruh. Like these things would have cost multiple times the actual price of the terrarium itself, so at that point I might as well buy a completely new one, right? Now some of you might be wondering, uh, hold up, why are you trying to transport this terrarium separately? Can't you just stick it in the back of the truck with the rest of your possessions that you need to move anyways? Well, the answer is, I didn't actually have my own place yet due to the bonkers housing market in the new city I was going to move to. We 
which means I didn't have any apartment to move my new things into. So um, yeah, I was about to start a new job without having a home, which was fun. Instead, I was going to stay in a spare room at my relative's place because thankfully I actually have friends and relatives in this new area, unlike my previous place where I was wasting away in isolation for the last few years of my life. And let me tell you, there's nothing that makes you feel more isolated and abandoned than having to organize a move in an environment where you have no real life social network. I mean, ultimately you can organize all of these things by yourself, but usually it's a lot more time consuming and expensive to do so if you have no one to help you out. Thankfully, the relatives I was going to stay with didn't mind the 23 plants, two snakes and slug that were coming with me, although I'll be honest, I didn't actually mention the slug until I arrived there. In the end, I actually lived at my relative's place for around two months before I was finally able to get an apartment of my own. And that was because I was speed running the apartment hunting process. But yes, to cut a long story short, that's why I had to get a new terrarium directly upon arrival and couldn't wait around for my old terrarium to be delivered to my non-existent apartment at the time. But uh, since I didn't have money to splurge on a new terrarium because Lord knows my employer was not paying a single cent towards my move and I also didn't really have the time for a completely new setup on such short notice, I instead decided to buy a terrarium secondhand. And to do this, I turned to Kleinanzeigen aka German Craigslist or Le Bon Coin for you francophones. And I turned to this platform to see what kind of 150 centimeter long or five foot long terrariums were for sale at my destination. Well, luckily for me, I hit the jackpot and was able to score this extremely aesthetically pleasing 150 by 60 by 60 centimeter OSB construct originally built for an African hedgehog. It was basically perfect. It had the same dimensions as my old terrarium. It had the heat lamp cage already installed. It had multiple platforms for climbing which I didn't have in my old setup, it had ventilation holes, and to top it off, the OSB was sealed with some kind of resin, making it resistant to moisture, and I was able to score all of this for a measly 80 euros. All I would have to do is throw in my hides, the substrate, and some branches, as well as my deep heat projector, thermostat, and UVB tube, which are all things I would bring with me in my car, and bam, terrarium setup would be complete. So I messaged a vendor like, oh, if I pay in advance, can I reserve this terrarium and pick it up next week? And luckily they were like, sure, because Apparently there's not so much competition for overdimensional OSB terrariums. And so with that, I was able to ensure that both of my snakes would have terrariums as soon as I arrived at my new destination. In the week before the move, I began preparing by creating transport boxes for the snakes and packing materials in general. She just got out and uh, decided to explore this bag which is a problem because I'm trying to pack and I can't pack if there's a snake in my bag. But okay, I shall tolerate it because you're too adorable. She's not helping with the packing, but uh, I guess it's our final day of freedom in this apartment. Here's the first batch of plants in their box. I know this fits in the terrarium with a bit of extra space so I can add some more plants there but I don't know if I'll actually be able to take all of my plants because I still have this guy, I have these guys, uh, these guys as well, spider plant and uh, Chinese money plant so it's gonna be um, interesting and I have this crap here. And so this monstrosity here is my cactus Kelly Roland, which I got as a present in 2014 when it was approximately this big. <laughs> and as you can see, it uh, grew quite a bit and also decided to become horizontal and not vertical anymore. Thankfully, I still had a single friend left in the area where I was living before who helped me carry the corn snakes terrarium and load it into my car the evening before the move. And I was so fortunate to have them there because it wouldn't have been possible to move the thing alone. Not that the weight of the terrarium was really a problem, it was mainly the volume. Now on the day of the move, I finalized the packing of things I was planning to take with me. Those things being the girls and the plants. She's about to get packed. I don't think she's amused by this. I hope that by kind of partially burying it in the substrate, it's not gonna slide around when I hit the brakes. And also, even if I hit the brakes, 
Um, it's very lightweight, so I don't think it will do a lot of damage to the snake. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape up the sides with black paper so she doesn't feel so exposed. And uh, yeah, she doesn't seem to be too miffed at the moment. So I ended up taking more than six hours to pack. I wanted to leave early, but um, we're leaving in the evening, right? In time for rush hour. Python is in here, and you can already see she's not having it. The corn snake is strapped onto the python. <laughs> um, I can still shift gears, so there's that. Oh, but it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. I swear to God. Oh, it's a nightmare. My trip hasn't even begun. So I think I turn off the electricity in my place. Oh, turn off the water to the kitchen. Oh, turn off the internet, the router. And now I have all this, this crap. Is this legal? But I did manage to fit all my plants in. I think some of them will feature some damage. Uh, but at least no plant, no living thing in my apartment uh, was left behind. Uh, which is nice. But oh my god, I'm not looking forward to this at all. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be awful. It's gonna be so awful. In a bout of smooth-brained optimism, I thought I was going to be able to get all of my stuff packed in the morning in like two hours and then be able to set off by car at around 10 a.m. Well, it ended up taking over six hours and I set off around 4 p.m. So right in time for rush hour, but not just any rush hour. No, 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 the Ile de France rush hour. Have you ever driven on the Paris Ring Road, aka the Périphérique? Because words cannot describe how much I hate driving on it. So despite the overall vibes of this road trip already being putrid from the very start, at least I was able to feel a small sense of satisfaction of never having to drive there ever again in my life after this ordeal. Now the drive itself was um, not great. First off, I couldn't connect my phone to my car's sound system because the transport boxes were constantly pushing against the touchscreen and blocking the dials of the interface, which means I couldn't play anything. So instead I was using my cell phone speakers, resulting in a musical experience only a 14 year old in the back of a bus in 2008 would be able to appreciate. <laughs> I noticed early on that my snakes were also not having it. They basically spent the entire ride trying to push up against their transport boxes, trying to escape. Now the corn snake was quite securely sealed in her box, but the python, well, I quickly realized that I had made a terrible, terrible mistake when it came to my choice of transport container. We're in a World War One zone. We're by Verdun. Um, can't stop to see the battlefields I have no time and my python keeps trying to bust out of her container like uh, the aliens uh, bust out of human rib cages and it is very stressful. Uh, basically I'm driving around 140 kilometers an hour while playing whack-a-mole with the transport container to prevent the python from escaping and I have nothing to secure the container while I'm on the go so I can't really improve it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, worst road trip ever so far and uh, I still have oh, three and a half hours to go so wish me luck. We're kind of halfway there at this point but good lord, what a pain in the end. Despite these issues, the overall drive was going all right, or so I thought until the incident occurred. Now I don't have any footage of the incident because I was driving, but uh, here, have this reconstruction. So at some point I'm going around like 130 on the highway and I see some motion in the corner of my eye and to my shock, the python has her head on the dashboard. Which means she had finally succeeded in squeezing herself out between the box and the lid. And that was extremely concerning to me, much more so than the fact that she was on my dashboard because I was very worried she could be injured by the pressure of being wedged between the lid and the box. So what do I do? Kind of floor it to the nearest highway stop, which thankfully was only around a kilometer away. Now while I'm exiting the highway and turning towards the parking area, I might have decelerated a bit too hard as the transport containers shifted forwards quite
quite abruptly. Now, they didn't fly, but it was quite the abrupt motion. Now, I don't know what exactly happened because I was mainly looking at the road, but the movement may have startled the snake, resulting in her pulling her head back into the container. Obviously, I immediately went to check on her as soon as I had parked and luckily she looked totally fine with no signs of injury from pushing herself out like that, at least at the moment. So yeah, I really came to regret having used that container for her transport and the worst thing was that I didn't really have anything on board to secure the lid to prevent this from happening again, except for a bungee cord which was not ideal. Luckily, you will be happy to hear that I was able to somehow attach the bungee cord to the container and then hook it to the underside of my car seat where it was somewhat secure and prevented the lid from being pushed open again. And it also didn't snap loose during the car ride to hit me in the head and knock me out, resulting in some kind of fatal car accident. So that's a plus as well. But one lesson you should take away from this is that if you have a transport container for a snake and it is even the slightest bit loose or flexible, just do yourself a favor and pack your snake into a sack. Just do it, please. A ticket 25 euros 80 cents that's price okay Yoink. Oh, go. at least the snake the ball python has calmed down oh no nope she's trying to push <laughs> she's trying to push open the the container. Never mind. I thought she was finally calm, but I was lying. Um, and the corn snake is also still trying to find an escape. It's been like four hours. We have three more hours. So, um, <sighs> well, here we go. This is the last one before the border. At this point, I can't see what the snakes are doing. So I hope they're still inside. Yeah, I see her. She's still inside the container. I think she might have calmed down, finally. Now, the rest of my journey was fairly uneventful until I hit the French-German border. I'm gonna get the crossing the border footage. So we've just crossed the German border. Oh wait, here we go. You see it? You see it? You see it? You see it? border crossed. Oh, and I go. In the arms of the angel. Oh crap, I got caught. Oh, going 30 kilometers over the speed limit. That is terrible. Bad, bad move on my part. But it's okay. I didn't actually lose my driver's license. Instead, I just had to pay like 130 euros, which makes this the most expensive photo I ever took. Luckily, this did occur on the German side of the border because would this have been on the French side, it would have been a lot more expensive. This is why you don't vlog and drive. I mean, would I have been speeding anyways if I weren't filming? But might have noticed the red flash hitting the car a few hundred meters ahead of me, thus being able to slow down in time and avoid getting flashed myself. Okay, now that I've outed myself as a criminal, uh, let's get on with the rest of the story. So I arrived at my parents' place at like 2 a.m. Um, and this was not actually my final destination. I just decided to do a stopover and divide my journey into two bouts of approximately seven hour drives as opposed to one 14 hour drive. For the stopover, I was able to keep the corn snake in her container while I could transfer the ball python into her mesh tent, which I had luckily packed in the car as well. The next morning I set off again for the remainder of my trip. Another seven hour drive which was fun. Uh, this time I was actually able to secure the ball python's enclosure with a lashing belt which kept the lid down a bit better but it didn't stop her from repeatedly trying to push her head out of each corner of the box for multiple hours throughout the drive. Truly putrid vibes. Also, in case some of you are wondering what the difference between driving on German and French highways is, well, the French highways cost money and they have a speed limit of 130 kilometers an hour. 
but they are very empty and I have rarely encountered any maintenance work. Once I'm out of the Paris region, I can basically drive the whole way up to the German border on cruise control. German highways, on the other hand, are free and have multiple sections where there is absolutely no speed limit, which means you can drive as fast as you want. However, they're also quite full and tend to have a lot of areas under maintenance. This means that your typical German highway experience consists of sections where you are able to go too fast, too furious, which alternate with other sections in which you will be trapped in extremely long construction zones where you can reach speeds of up to 80 km an hour if you're lucky and you're not just stuck in stop and go traffic. So it's a bit of a trade-off. One thing that is nice about driving in Germany is that the population is more evenly distributed amongst multiple medium-sized cities, which means you don't have any gigantic all-consuming clusters like Paris or London with their horrible traffic and awful, awful ring roads. Anyways, now you know. That's where my travel footage ends. I missed my apartment viewing that I was kind of speeding to get to and made it to my relative's place by approximately one hour later than anticipated. But hey, at least I was there in the early afternoon this time and not at 2 a.m. The first thing I did upon arriving was to unload my snakes. I was able to set up the corn snakes terrarium on the same evening and I'm fairly certain we were also able to pick up the ball pythons terrarium that afternoon because thankfully one of my family members drives around big vans for work which means we were able to transport the damn thing fairly effortlessly because as I mentioned it would have been impossible to do so in my own car. Now after cleaning the thing as best I could and disinfecting it I was able to set it up and add the python in a day later. So all in all this move kind of sucked or majorly sucked, not gonna lie. However, all things considered, I achieved everything I had to achieve in a fairly efficient way. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to me at the time, there were certain developments that appear to have been set in motion during the process of this move, the consequences of which I am still dealing with months later, but that is a subject for another video. For now, I would just like to thank you for watching. Just know that I have multiple videos in the works and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Also, hi to all new subscribers and thanks for subscribing while I was inactive. I appreciate it. Bye bye.